<clears throat> hey, what's up? I want to fly fans. Uh, I thought I would uh, take a quick uh, moment to give you an update on my uh, instrument rating situation right now. So uh, I am happy to report that I took the test on this past Monday. It's now Friday, April 9th. Took it Monday um, and I passed. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm pretty happy with, with my, my grade. I got an 88. I was really hoping to try to get over 90. Um, that's just kind of the way I am, try to, try to overachieve. But here's the good news. 88 is better than the national average. The national average is about 85, 85.6, I think is the exact number from the FAA. So pretty happy with the way I performed. So the question that everybody is gonna ask, how did I do it and what did I use? Well, I'll tell you, I use a combination of two things. And if you go back to the video, I'll try to post it up there. Uh, when I was talking about my uh, preparation for this whole uh, test, um, I said then that I was using M0A, and I did. And I finished not with M0A, but I finished with Shepard Air. And I'm gonna tell you why. There's a good reason for this. First of all, um, I think M0A is excellent. I think from the perspective of starting from scratch, starting from the basics after you get your private pilot. Um, M0A was awesome. Gave me all the information I needed. I went through the videos. I probably could have done it quicker. I think I did three months worth of M0A, which gets a little pricey. So if you can kind of get through the, the educational program with M0A, um, and what I did is I actually did the educational program. I did the, the lessons. I watched all the videos and then I um, went through the boot camp, went through the written boot camp. Well, I don't feel like it prepared me enough for the specific test questions. So what I did at the recommendation of Vern is uh, I went and I, I purchased the Shepard Air uh, instrument rating airplane uh, program. And by doing that, uh, and, I, and by the way, I spent a week cramming with Shepard Air. If you are going to do Shepard Air, okay, you're gonna need more than a week. Trust me, you're gonna need, you're gonna need like uh, at least two weeks to get through this program. But the study process is very, in my opinion, it, it just really works. And the way that they make you study this, they actually have a program uh, a document within that. It's it's very old school, you know, it's just follow the questions and follow the test. But the, the system is what works. And the system is you go through the entire section and the only thing you see is the answer. So you go through the questions, you see the answer. Go through the questions and you go through the section. Then you go back you and you go through the questions again and then you see the answer plus the optional two other answers. And then you choose them from there. And for some reason, it just works. It makes your brain, it forces your brain to learn, uh, at least for me, forces your brain to learn, you know, you knew what the answer was up front, and then you take it again, and then you, of course, uh, pick the answer from the three. And, you know, sometimes I don't remember it, and sometimes I did, and, and it actually worked out well for me. And when I started that uh, test down at the testing center, uh, I felt really good. I mean, I feel like... You know, they could throw just about anything at me. I'd gone through most all of the questions. None of the questions were surprises. None of the questions. There were some, you know, obviously there were some, uh, there were some uh, gotcha questions and some, you know, typical FAA, uh, you know, trick questions on there. But, um, and I think actually those are the ones I missed uh, for the 88. So some of them, you know, the answer is sort of right, but it's not totally right. Um, so I'm real happy with it. That is what I did to pass my first time through the instrument written check ride. And now it's off back to the Cirrus 
and I'm going to be flying the wings off that thing. Me and Vern are going to be doing some, uh, some a lot more IFR work. Uh, again, uh, the video we just recently did uh, where we tried to do an IFR approach in Tampa and uh, the traffic didn't allow it. So keep watching the channel. Uh, thanks for everything that, uh, for all of you who have subscribed to the channel, my subscription levels are rising. Thank you for that. Please don't forget, if you do like these videos, make sure you click uh, uh, the, the like button. Make sure you slam that like button and uh, let, let the Google al algorithm know that uh, yeah, it should present these to other people because I think, at least I hope you think, that these are useful. And um, it's kind of what I would have wanted to see as I go through this process. So hopefully it works for you. And, um, you know, I can keep you posted as to my progress. So one step done. Now I only need to get my uh, practical done and I am an instrument pilot. And I'm thankful for that because I've heard some of the horror stories. Uh, uh, I know Flight Chops uh, was working on his instrument ready for quite a while. And um, it's tough. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's a different way of thinking. It's a different way uh, versus your private pilot uh, scenario. So um, I really actually enjoyed it. I'm enjoying going through the uh, the instrument rating, learning more, becoming a better pilot. So if you like this, don't forget to subscribe, smash the like button. Have an awesome day. See you next time.